guys, how's it going? So glad you could join me for this. Time for a reading, partly because I haven't done one for ages, and partly because there are big cosmic happenings this week. We've just had Jupiter go direct, and uh, we've got Mercury retrograde actually ending on the day I'm making this video, which is October 18th, 2021. And if you're watching in the future, no worries. The time to watch these videos is right now when you're drawn to them. That's really how it works. That's really how we roll. So Mercury retrograde ending and a full moon coming up a couple of days from now as well. So the energies are strong and things are moving fast. You know, things that the, the pressure is off, I guess. That's the way to put it. Um, the heat is off. Um, and you'd think things would slow down a bit, but uh, not really. We're actually going to have to put the brakes on a little bit, I think, in, in all of our own lives as we go through. Just because, you know, we've been like pushing, pushing, pushing against all these planetary retrogrades and all this craziness. And now suddenly there is a ton of energy. So the Starman Tarot is coming out. That's the deck we're going to read in this video. I will have a bit more of a shuffle, get the cards all nice and uh, and random. So, I've been having a crazy time with technology today. You know, I must have four or five different cameras and uh, <laughs> you, ju you, know, you just never know which one's going to work and which one isn't going to work. I was just making a video a minute ago with a different camera and I had to abandon it because it just kept going out of focus all the time. Absolutely crazy. It doesn't usually do that. Um, so there you go, Mercury is direct, no Mercury retrograde, but I'm still having trouble communicating, electronically at least. And uh, that, I guess, as much as anything, is because uh, when you come out of Mercury retrograde, we actually get a post-shadow. There's a pre-shadow just before Mercury retrograde and a post-shadow just afterwards when things are still not quite right because what's happening now is Mercury has stationed direct and is starting to move forward again very slowly and it speeds up over quite a, quite a while, two or three weeks. It's going to be the 3rd of November before Mercury is actually going full speed ahead again. And in that time, in that post shadow, we start finding reasons for things. We start working out why certain things happened. So anyway, seems like a good time for me uh, to be doing a reading. Just generally speaking, a reading for everyone. Okay, so we're going to go card number... Where are we? Card number one, card number two, card number three, card number four, card number five. You can pick a card, you can pick all the cards, you can pick any combination of cards. Be your own psychic friends. This is really what it's all about, you know. That, that's what this channel is all about anyway. And really that's what psychic stuff, generally speaking, is all about. You know, you get people like me and I know many of you are practitioners as well. And uh, we have kind of decided we want to do this all the time. And uh, this is how we're going to make a difference. And you get other people who kind of maybe don't see themselves as psychic, don't see themselves as having any kind of gift. But everyone's got a little bit of that gift, you know. It's just how much you want to develop it or not. But uh, in any case, do be your own psychic and pick one of those cards, pick all of those cards, pick a combination. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I would strongly recommend picking all five, actually. But it is, you know, it's up to you. And uh, you'll be guided, I'm sure, to uh, the right card or the right combination of cards. So we're using the Starman. Very sort of David Bowie-based illustrations here. Uh, this deck was... Uh, all the artwork in this deck, anyways, by uh, David DeAngelis, who uh, produced a lot of artwork for David Bowie. So there's a kind of familiar feeling about this if you're a Bowie fan. For sure. And uh, all the traditional wisdom of the tarot is there too. Is here too, in fact. So uh, lots of familiarity there. Let's get started with card number one. Let's see what we've got. And it's the eight of wands. Oh, camera's really focusing quite nicely. I've obviously picked the right camera for today. This one will probably be up the spout again tomorrow. And I'll have to use a different camera. 
But here we go with the Eight of Wands, an amazing scene here. Now, with the wands, we're talking about very fiery energy, okay? It's the element of fire, the fire signs Leo, Sagittarius and Aries, of course. And we do have an Aries moon at the moment. We're coming up to a full moon in Aries. So uh, Aries is really the energy of the moment. So this is very appropriate uh, as a first card in this five card pick a card reading eight of wands take initiative you know the wands are all about uh, getting things done action actually making things happen so um take the initiative and be willing to work for the improvements you want because there is a lot of abundance indicated here it's going to be worth putting the effort in to try and achieve what you want to achieve to try and make things happen okay eight of wands there's energy coming in basically a lot of incoming energy particularly because the weight of all these retrogrades is suddenly off our shoulders and we're suddenly able to make progress again so we want to be really working at it it's a great time to use that energy that's coming in to really get somewhere to really make a difference where you're going to get maybe we'll see more of that in the rest of this reading or maybe that is something that's just going on in your own life this isn't product placement by the way they're not paying me i'm just having a quick drink of this mm. and it's coke zero it's got no sugar in it you can get it in uk with no sugar and no caffeine uh, but you have to go to particular shops to get that at the moment and they didn't have it in my local place and I'm not driving much at the moment, what with various things that have gone on recently. So I'm drinking this zero sugar Coke Zero. Mm -hmm. ah. Always good to hydrate, but I do like a bit of Coke as well as water. Not the naughty Coke, you understand, just this stuff that comes in the tin here. Right, okay, so that's card number one, the Eight of Wands. But friends, are you interested in card number two? Did you pick card number two? Did you pick all five? Whatever you pick, card number two has something to say to you right here, right now. It's number five from the Major Arcana, and it's the Hierophant, the Hierophant, some would say. And uh, it's all about spiritual knowledge, I guess, you know. Um, it, it, it's a lot like the energy of the Hermit card in some ways, because it invites you to look within yourself. But uh, rather than the Hermit, where, where it's all about soul searching and actually being within yourself and spending more time within yourself, this is like go on a fishing expedition into your spiritual knowledge and bring it out again and actually use it in the world. That's what's going on here. Uh, the, the Hierophant is the caretaker of spiritual knowledge and you will find somewhere deep in your psyche there is that need to take care of the spiritual knowledge, the things that you've learned, and actually to teach those things to other people as well. And um, so part of this is the knowledge you've got inside you and it's about bringing it out into the world and using it with what's going on in the world because it's also about awakening to the world and we can see this very bright kind of sunny image in this card. The colours aren't doing too well in this camera setup at the moment but believe me I've, I've tried everything to try and make these cards more visible so I hope it's working for you somehow we have got some higher heart chakra pink at the top so love is indicated love is what it's all about uh, it has to be that's the nature of it and the hierophant here is wearing his purple robe so he's uh, surrounded with that feeling of healing that goes with purple and also you know it's a very royal kind of uh, energy that goes with the color purple too so uh, here we go caretaker of spiritual knowledge think about your own spiritual knowledge think what you could do with that spiritual knowledge bringing it to bear on all the craziness that's going on in the world at the present time is that better yeah i think that's slightly less glary if i do it that way isn't it <laughs> okay we'll do it that way um but yeah, be willing to teach others. That's the thing. We're always meeting people. People are always being drawn to us. And it's not like just only people that we meet for the first time. This is family. This is friends. This is people we know well. It's good to share the knowledge we have with everyone who is around us, you know. But uh, wake up to the world as well as waking up to your own spiritual knowledge. That's important too. And pay attention to the details because there are all kinds of things caught up in the details, you know. 
This is something I'm going to go on my soapbox about uh, mediumship here, actually, uh, because I, I do a lot of work in mediumship and it, it's I teach people as well. And it's really an important thing to look for details, uh, spiritually speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, not just with mediumship, with anything, but looking for the details. Uh, for example, you, you can connect up as a medium and you can get certain things coming through, information coming through. But if you ask your spirit guides for more, more will always come. And uh, this doesn't just apply to mediumship. This is a whole thing of the, you know, the psychic realms, everything to do with it. There is always a bit more. That sounds better, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there is always a bit more. Well, I thought, thought it was better. It's not... Mm. Gosh, things do keep changing and I haven't moved the lights at all. Um, yeah, right, OK, I've forgotten what I was talking about now, but I think that's par for the course. The Hierophant, the caretaker of spiritual knowledge. Be aware of the spiritual knowledge you have and be aware also, friends, that you are a guardian of that knowledge, you know, and you can actually teach others. As long as you're paying attention to details and as long as you're awake to the world, you're going to be getting the most out of that. And that's what really matters. OK, number two, the Hierophant there. Card number three is the Four of Pentacles. Here it is. No, that, that's, that side is definitely better now. OK, we live in a changing world, do we not? And uh, for some reason, the light is changing. It must be because the sun's going down or something at the moment. There we go. Coming into winter and the sun sets that bit earlier. Four of Pentacles, four square, the angel number. Very solid feeling here. Pentacles, earth sign energy, of course, the element of earth, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, the signs associated with this card. And, um, you know, it, it's all about how much do you want, how much work do you want to put in? That is what the grounding side of the earthiness of the pentacles is all about, because the pentacles themselves are full of abundance and they, they speak really strongly of abundance to us. With the four of pentacles, there's a lot of confidence. And I'm so glad this is the middle card in this reading, actually. It's quite exciting that this one has come up the way it's come up, because there is so much new energy about and so much positive energy about at the time I'm doing this reading, when we've got Mercury retrograde ending, when we've got Jupiter retrograde actually ended now, and a full moon coming up as well. Wow, such a busy week, really, spiritually speaking, at the time this video is coming out. So there is a lot of energy and there is a lot of confidence around as well. And it's not misplaced confidence either. Um, basically, you could kind of win your cause at the moment. You could use this energy to win a thing you've been fighting for, a thing that matters to you, a thing that makes a difference in your life. Really trying to show this card as well as I can. I'm going to have to rebuild the old studio. It's the only way. Okay, but take a close look at that card there. It's all going on. Much brighter colours than seem to be showing on my camera at the moment. But what are you going to do about it? Hmm? Just rebuild the old studio. That's all you can do. That's my noble cause that I need to win. And it's also something I need to reinvent about my videos and my channel. And the Four of Pentacles is an invitation to reinvent yourself. You know, not necessarily to throw away the way you've always been. You know, you keep the lessons, you keep the love, you keep all the good stuff from the past. Just get rid of what no longer serves you and reinvent yourselves without the shackles, without the chains that have been holding you back all this time. And uh, try and let go of false identities if you picked this card as well, guys. And actually, if you picked all five, this one is the heart of the matter. So uh, it's all about being as genuine as you possibly can be. You know, keeping it real, basically. And a lot of people would uh, be laughing up their trunk at the thought of uh, a superstitious kind of spiritualist kind of card reader saying, keep it real. But, you know, it really is um, a true set of energies that come in when we work psychically. It's uh, truth that we tap into, you know, that not everyone gets to tap into. And I think that's why some people get a bit jealous about it. And I think that's why some people don't actually think we're at all real or anything like that. But it really is about keeping it real. 
Of course it is. Okay, so this brings us to card number four now. Moving on, what is the kind of short-term future if we picked all five? And if you just picked this card, well, this is your card. It is the two of wands. Now, this is all about gaining perspective. It reminds me a lot of the two of swords in lots of ways. But the big difference is this is the two of wands. It's fiery energy. Again, we started the reading with the eight of wands. Now we've got the two of wands. Another take on the fire sign energy, Leo, Sagittarius and Aries. And this character, sort of semi-blindfolded really, got this mask thing on. Looks as if he doesn't entirely know what he's doing or where he's going. Or he or she could be either, really. But uh, there's a feeling of confusion. And that is Coolio, really, because this card is all about taking the time to gain perspective. It's about waiting for the right moment. It isn't time to take off yet. Now, with the Two of Swords... It's very different, you know, the, the character is usually shown completely blindfolded and with the Two of Swords you have to take a shot in the dark. But uh, this is, you know, saying don't take a shot in the dark, wait for the right moment. We have got massive abundance of energy at the moment, so it's really important to make the most of that energy. It really is. Um, Drafting plans, coming up with new ideas, but uh, like anything with a draft, you always get the chance to discard it and start again, or to redraft it and just change things. So don't be making hard and fast plans right now, but do be drafting out some plans. Look outwards to the future, really, and think about where you want to take your life, where you want to be, and where you want the whole situation to be going. Okay. So that's card number four. One more card to go in this five card spread. Did you pick card number five, my friends? Let me know in the comments below what cards you picked, by the way. And this one is the six of swords. So we're into sword. And I was just talking about swords energy. And we've got the six of, six of swords up now. Air sign here. The answers are blowing in the wind. This is Gemini, Libra and Aquarius energy that go with this one. And uh, what we've really got to do, the message of this card, as much as anything, is being careful with the energy of transition, being aware of it and beware of it, if you know what I mean, which is slightly different to being aware, although uh, the two words seem to, you know, words, words desert me, excuse me. The two words seem to go together and complement each other. Um, and so, yeah, beware, be wary of the energy of transition. All this new energy we've got is bound to push things into transition, really, because there is such a weight off from all the changes that are going on at the moment. Really, really positive in so many ways. But uh, it, they can only be negative if we kind of let ourselves get rushed into new things. Um, on my other channel, uh, For Astro Truth, do check it out, by the way. There's a, a link to that channel down in the description below. It's my astrology channel and I put a video up yesterday and it had slow down in the title and someone said why would we slow down when the planetary retrogrades are over and um, you know it, 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 it's because the planetary retrogrades are over and there is so much new energy that you've got to put the brakes on because it's so easy to overdo things at a time like this. The transition is a good thing, you know. It's all about the ascension. It really is. And uh, I certainly wouldn't want to encourage anyone to hide away from the energy of transition. But be wary of it. Know what it means to you before you actually go along with it. Um, it's time to leave the familiar behind. It's time to move forward in a big way. It really is. But to do that, we've got to kind of know how we feel about the past. And that's why it's important to take some time out and think about the past. Think about the lessons. Think about the love that we want to keep from the past. Think about what we want to let go of, what no longer serves us, and let it go. And then actually keep moving forward, you know. Uh, and as you're contemplating it, the thing to do is test your own abilities, okay? Put things into practice in a gentle way. Just see what, uh, what comes of it as you start moving forward. And uh, give yourself a chance to kind of go, going back to the two of wands and change the plans that you drafted uh, to gain knowledge. And then you can go forward big style. Then you can make great things and amazing things happen. 
you really can. Okie dokie there, my friends, is our reading. And with that, thanks so much for watching, guys. It's uh, really, uh, really good to sort of have you all on board and everything. Really appreciate the way you guys have stuck with me through thick and thin. And it has been pretty thin on this channel lately. But there we go. I'm coming back to life and making things happen again. And now the, uh, the retrogrades are sorting themselves out. And we're stampeding towards kind of Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that good stuff. Stampeding, really, towards 2022. I've already been looking at the astrology of 2022. So the journey continues. The Twig Brother journey continues. Everyone's journey continues. That's really what all this stuff is about. You know, all this psychic knowledge is all stuff for the journey. It's meant to take us forward. It's meant to be positive. It's meant to keep that forward motion going. But as we've seen in that, re in that reading we've just done, it's uh, important to sort of reason things out for yourselves, not just kind of blindly go forward, but actually to think about the plans you want to make. So with that, friends, thanks very much indeed for watching. Have a fantastic time ahead. Leave me a comment. We will share the journey. Drop a like on this one, please, if you've enjoyed it. And why not hit the subscribe button? Because there are going to be more videos coming all the time. We'll be live together again soon, I am sure. Um, if you hit the subscribe button, you will get a notification a little while before that live video starts. So take good care of yourselves, my friends. I'll see you again very soon. Love, light, blessings and peace.